and welcome to another edition of Between Knits and Pearls, Friend Edition. Today, it's just Steph and I, and we are catching each other up on what we've been working on, and we're so glad you guys could join us. Yes, life um, happenings this week. Yes, exactly. So my name is Emily, as all of you know, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anders Mill Knits. And I am coming to you from the not so spring like mm -hmm. cold Alaska. Oh. There's there's not a green inside. It's just all brown and white. <laughs> well, I'll share my green with you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Stephanie, and I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Farmstead Knits. And I am coming from the bluegrass state of Kentucky, and it is going to be 70 degrees today. I've been out in the yard already in my overalls and plants are outside getting a little sunshine as we speak. So, oh, I, yeah. Will you take a picture of that and send it to me so I can put it on the screen? Oh, absolutely. I have tomatoes and peppers outside right now in the garden. Currently, I have cabbage, bok choy, several kinds of lettuce. My garlic is no joke, like almost a foot tall. So it's, oh, it's exciting to see all of that come up. I just, it's my favorite time of the year. Wow. Yeah. I'm so how big of an area are you gardening? That's a good question. When we were in Iowa, I had a significant... <laughs> significant size garden. Um, here I am actually just doing gardening beds because currently we're renting a house um, with our current situation. And so I am doing raised beds and I have, yeah. I think I want to say six or eight beds right now, which is for a lot of people, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. But what I'm used to is, you know, I would rip out the yard if it were up to me. I know, right? <laughs> My husband, on the other hand, is not so keen on that. But oh my gosh. He humors me, so it's good. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, like so many people right now are talking about gardening. Um, a friend of mine was just asking me if I was going to do any gardening. And I was like, well, I'm still in the condo, so I still don't have any land, but I'm going to do, uh, t I feel like I've got enough sunlight yeah. that I can do tomatoes. I'm yep. hoping my roses and my hydrangeas will come back again. Um, and then I'm going to do a pot of carrots and then I'm just going to go over to my parents' house. And oh, do and they've got a lot too. Oh yeah. 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 My brother, my mom has always been a gardener, but my brother-in-law, Oleg, he's a farmer. Like See? he Take is, advantage of that. Yeah. Like last awesome. year's crop was astounding. Even with all of us, um, utilizing it. Yeah. We were afraid we would still have to throw some stuff out because. Isn't that so cool? And my favorite part is to take it down to the local food bank because, mm. you know, and for those of you who are gardeners and my heart, <laughs> hear my plea. If you have extra fresh fruits and veggies, take them to your local food pantries. They get boxed food. It's the same thing over and over a can, a box, a pasta, they will gladly take fresh produce if you ever have leftovers, you know, and I know it's COVID and we can't get too close. Just call them and tell them you're going to drop a box off. You yep, know, it, it brings exactly me joy to be able to, you know, share my garden with other people too. Yes. What, yeah. Very well said, because you're exactly right. And how it works for, in my, in my organization, we have a food pantry, uh, one yeah. of the few in Anchorage, and we always have, even, <clears throat> sorry guys, breakfast has been trying to kill me. <laughs> you guys didn't see it, but I had a major coughing attack. Like, <laughs> and I'm still tearing up. Okay, <clears throat> we're good. She's good, she's not, she'll make it. Yeah, but like, even <sighs> during COVID, we still accepted um, produce from people and it was either they would leave it outside our door and we would pick it up or they would do the drive-through. And um, what happens with us is, especially if it's brand new produce, it immediately gets recycled. It doesn't even go into our storage area. Yeah. It just immediately gets put out for people yeah. to get. Because well, I mean, And for so many person. people too, um, a lot of times people who are utilizing food pantries, 
they just don't think to cook that way. And so it's kind of a nice surprise to get that in a box or in a bag. So yeah. Anyway, for those of you gardeners with plethora, remember your food pantries. Yes. And you know, in Alaska, veggies. Yeah. Are one of the most come by. <laughs> yeah. And they're extremely expensive. Like, yeah. Oh, I was so excited because I got a coupon for a free avocado yesterday. Hey. So I got it. <laughs> yeah. But then Jeremy made us a sandwich with the avocado on it. And I was just like, that is a terrible, terrible avocado. <laughs> That's when it like, becomes guacamole. Yes. <laughs> and we were just like, have we not had fresh fr uh, uh, oh. veggies since that long that we don't think it tastes good? <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Oh, well. Anyway. Oh, well. So <laughs> let's talk about between knits and pearls. You want to go first? Yeah. Um, as far as my week, like I said, a lot of gardening for me. Um, my girls are loving school, enjoying school because school is back where we are at, um, still under a lot of precautions, um, but things are working. And so we're, we're optimistically pleased. So that's exciting. Um, it is very much so getting warm where I live. Um, and for all you gardeners, I'm in 6B. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we are heavily into planting. I have a, I don't even know what you call them. They're, it's a five tier wired rack and I have greenhouse lighting in them inside the house. So I was just telling Emily, I probably have no less than a hundred plants right now. And they've already gone from seedling into four inch pots. Um, my girls are super excited because they're going to, instead of having a lemonade stand where we're giving drinks for people to eat this year, we're going to do a plant sale so they can take the money and they can use it for summer camp. So they're super that is excited. such a genius thing. I love that so much. So, and it makes sense. I mean, I've told you, yeah, like you are like a greenhouse, you know, I, I'm my own greenhouse. <laughs> yes, very much so. I have never successfully taken a plant, even in school, I've mm. never successfully taken a plant from a seedling to a full gr grown plant. Well, I'll help you with that. <laughs> I know. I mean, you were telling me, Emily, go out and get this and, and get yeah. the, the lights and stuff. And I was just like, Steph, I literally have nowhere to put it in the house. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Yep. Unless I thought you, what was your week like? Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm, you know, I'm always truthful. So, yeah. and Steph already knows she's been with me on the ride. I have had a pretty rotten week. Like it has been rough health wise. Um, <clears throat> I've been having a lot of health problems yeah. and um, I got my second COVID shot and that, yeah. and I'm going to, I guess, even though I'm almost 40, I guess I'm just so susceptible to things that, yeah, I, I pretty much had the flu for a couple days and I'm still having breathing problems. Mm. Um, but then, but then I got, I just got sicker and sicker and we could, and finally by Friday, Jeremy and I were just like, you have to go in to see the doctor. And it turns out there's a whole bunch of other things that were wrong. It wasn't just the vaccine. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> as soon as she got me on antibiotics by yesterday, Sunday, I finally felt human again. I was yeah. just like, man, I had no idea how bad I, I, I actually felt. And I have I actually feel good today. <clears throat> Isn't so that I the have crazy this... part? You crashed so bad. And it's like, oh man, I feel like I'm alive again. <laughs> yeah. Like it was so amazing yesterday. I like, I wasn't, I wasn't grumpy. I wasn't irritable. Um, I, it was just so much fun. And, um, you know, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Um, I could even I, tell you were feeling better, even just through text messages. Yeah. You know, there's that point where it's just, oh, I'm falling, I'm dying, I'm crashing. And then, oh, I'm good. You know, you can yep. just sense it in a friend, you know? Yes, totally. And I feel like that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's exactly what happened. And so one of the things that has been going on is, <clears throat> so for most of you, you probably already know that I have PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, and that has caused a whole bunch of things to go wrong. Like I still have vertigo, which apparently I, as a therapist, never knew that PTSD could, right. Could affect your brain in that way. Wow. But a pair, um, I went to a 
neuropsychologist um, in mm. Portland and he's like, you have a beautiful brain, what? but your what? vertigo, you. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Uh, but he's like, you're, you're not out of balance. Your uh, vertigo is completely psychological. It is completely linked to your PTSD. And I was it just is like, incredible what the mind can force the body to do when it comes to PTSD. It is no yeah. joke. Yeah. And, and so, and you know, there's, there's a lot of treatments out there and I did exposure therapy and I think that helped a lot. My problem has been that now that I, I absolutely love Jeremy and I'm extremely excited to get married. When we got engaged though, it triggered my PTSD. Mm -hmm. And so I've been having an incredible amount of night terrors and panic Mm -hmm. attacks and just kind of dealing with those things that sure. have been coming up on a those lot of real it. emotion. Yes. And so for those of you who don't know, when you have PTSD, so your brain <clears throat> processes memories and when a memory and when a, an event occurs, it's supposed to go into long-term memory. Right. However, when a, a traumatic event occurs, it, it isn't processed the same way. And so yeah. You d- never actually, well, not never. If you get the right treatment, it can actually go into long-term memory. But right. when you don't, it's it's not a memory per se. It's more like you're reliving it whenever you something triggers you. It could be a smell, a yeah. sound, a something, a, a place in your town. Yeah. Or it, it could be anything. Be yes. Yeah. Truly anything. Yeah. And in my mm-hmm. case, this was an event. Like, yeah getting engaged but it but the correlation to jeremy is not there it's not Mm. jeremy that's triggering me it's well that's good (laughs) yes exactly he's absolutely wonderful so anyway good so we've been dealing with that and um i'm still trying to find a therapist like everybody is full like and it's hard for me because i have so many therapist friends and i'm not allowed to go to them as a client so that That eliminates a lot it does Oh, so man. I think I'm just going to try talk space because maybe I can find oh. somebody on there, but well, that'd be interesting to hear how you like that. Yeah. So, so there you go, guys, not pretty, but that's the reality of it. And, that's right. That's you know, real life. <laughs> exactly. So we got, we got Steph's beautiful garden versus my, um, nightmarish woods. Oh. <laughs> Well, I went and I picked a bunch of daffodils and I put them on Instagram. So if you need to brighten your day, just go look at my post and you can see all the daffodils. (laughs) Oh, I will do that. Oh, yeah. I haven't been on Instagram. For anyone who needs it today. (laughs) There you go. That's absolutely beautiful. Did you grow them yourself? No, these were actually, um, they're wild. In our area, we have a lot of wooded areas. And so I went in and snipped a few and put them in a jar. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We don't have wildflowers like that here. We got five. Hey guys, Emily here. I just wanted to pop in a short little video to wrap things up about the PTSD talk because what I didn't say in the earlier recording with Steph was that not all traumatic events then equals PTSD. So what happens is for a normal processing brain, when a traumatic event happens, it's normal for you to relive that event for a month even up to 90 days okay it's and we and that can be termed as acute stress um and short-term trauma right but at some point during that 90 days your brain is able to process it and put it into long-term memory when it's not able to do that after that 90 days sometimes six months even that's when the ptsd diagnosis comes into play. So I kind of wanted to give you that a little bit of a um, tidbit because I was really nervous to talk about that on here. But at the same time, I've always tried to be well, in the last few years, I've tried very hard to be very genuine with you about things. And part of that genuineness is to be open and honest about the things that happened to me uh, in my past marriage and things like that without going into detail um because i don't feel like that is needed but just giving you that insight that that's what has happened like to me in particular 
um, that and some other traumatic events that happened after um, I left um, has led to me having all of these things. And PTSD symptoms um, can vary, I wouldn't say widely, but there are a lot of symptoms that even us as therapists are surprised about. So that's when I was talking about like the vertigo um, stuff was a surprise to me that it was linked to PTSD. I did not know that. So anyway, but I, so I thank you that even though I was disjointed with that, that you guys stuck with it. And um, if any of you are struggling with any kind of mental health concerns, especially right now due to COVID, it, there has been a sharp increase in mental health um, concerns throughout the United States. Um, please seek out assistance there. Um, across your screen now, I have put in the national hotline for suicide prevention or interaction. <sighs> And I, I, I volunteered with them for a year and a half and it was marvelous and also very, very hard. Um, so there's that, that's the national line. Uh, I would encourage you to seek out in your area if there's a safe talk line. So if you're not feeling necessarily suicidal, but you're struggling and you don't have anybody in your life that you feel you can talk to, there's a safe talk line uh, hopefully in your area. Not every area has it though, just so you are aware. And lastly, please take advantage, especially if you have health insurance, please take advantage of getting um, in to see a therapist. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've encouraged to do that just uh, since COVID started because they've, the, the isolation has increased so so largely. For instance, for me, I know that I wouldn't be experiencing this intense of a reaction if I was in a normal life schedule because I'm an extrovert and how I heal and get my energy and all this kind of stuff is by interacting with other people in person. But I can't do that. The best I can do is video. And so I think my symptoms are a little heightened because of that. So just be aware of who you are, what your needs are, and like, there's literally no shame uh, in going and getting help. Literally no shame. So I want to encourage you all to do that. Thank you guys for watching and back to the okay. show. Okay. So let's talk about pearls for a minute. Let's do it. It's going to be super fast. I'm going to yeah. quickly run down the list. Um, so if you would like to join us in our swap, go over to our Ravelry group and you can sign up there. All the details are there. We'll be picking names soon. If you want to join into our, well, wait a minute, our 1000 subscriber giveaway, that campaign, we've talked ad nauseum about it, so we're not gonna talk about it anymore. Um, but if you wanna see the prizes for that, you can go to past episodes. And then what was another one we need to talk about? I think that was it. I think that's it. Yeah. The Ravelry group is going to have most of the information yeah. or Instagram as well. Cause we'll post it on both. So. Yeah. I felt a little tense there. Did you see me get, all getting all tense? I, was, I want to get this done and get onto the good stuff. <laughs> it's just us. It's, it's, it's yeah. good. Oh, our Facebook group is exploding with people. Oh, so good. I need to, yeah, I awesome. need to plan something for that soon. Um, I know you won't be on it, but you know, I'm old school guys. I don't do Facebook, but I'm on Instagram. If you want to catch me on Instagram. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't know, maybe we can do an Instagram live. Oh yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. I don't know how people do that. I really don't like, cause it's not that I want to do Inst Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So I'm a friend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Lala, Lala knits. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh All last summer she did it. So I'll ask her. Yes. Um, but so the Facebook group is between knits and pearls and that's yeah. super fun. Like so many people over there, I think we have over a hundred already. That's and awesome. It's, yeah. It's only been two weeks. That's awesome. Um, and then. Um, I don't think anything else is going on yeah. that I can think of. Well, the end of March wraps up the plan knit cowl yes. uh, quarter one. Yep. Do we want to talk about that or? It's pretty well described in the Ravelry group. Um, and it, 
it's going by quarters. So as we're coming to the end of another quarter, go ahead and go in, in the group, look and see what we've got for second quarter mm -hmm. and then kind of get prepared with that. And then maybe next time we can dive more into that as far as, far as specifics and focuses. There you go. I like that because I don't really feel prepared, even though I've got a personal plan for the second quarter. Right. Right. Of my, yeah. yeah. I don't really feel prepared to talk about it, but. Well, and again, that's the whole thing about this cow. It is what works for you. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So, and I have a confession to make. Oh, do tell. Yes. Um, uh, this is not tossing wool section. I'm not going to talk about what I, what I got necessarily, but you guys probably saw my February stash episode in which I confessed all. <laughs> None of that has made it into my Ravelry library yet. <laughs> but it will. It will. <laughs> That's my confession. Like There's I was doing it. so good. And then I've crashed. <laughs> You'll get there. Hey, at least it's not the quantity that you had to do before. Exactly. It'll there probably take me like an hour. And I can get it all there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. get there. Perfect. All right, my love. Why don't you start us off with the knits? Okay. I'm going to jump into my finished objects. I finished my Vanilla Bean Socks by Emily O'Grady. And this has just the slipped stitch once you get to the color change, which is super fun. It's more of a recipe and she says that. Um, it's free on Ravelry for those of you that wanna look at it. Um, so it's called the Vanilla Bean and then I just use some good old Knit Picks Felici. So those turn out fun. These will go in the gift box. Um, I, I do them. knit a considerable amount of socks in, in the hopes of giving them out as Christmas gifts. So I just yeah. keep putting them in the box. <laughs> are you ever, are you ever afraid that they're not going to fit the recipient? I usually knit for that recipient, put a little okay. tag on it and then put it in the box. And I just, I go down my list. So I see, but I, I take the year of knitting socks, you know, with all the different sock cows and different groups, I just, I do that, but I knit primarily for Christmas gifts all year long. Yeah. It's not oh. down to the wire. I got to get 20 pairs of socks done. <laughs> yeah. And so. you know, there's, uh, uh, you know, we did the year long uh, 12 yes. gift knit socks last yes. cow last year, but yeah. this year we're, we're doing something different. It's yep. still a year long, but there are quite a few podcasters out there. YouTube YouTubers yes. out there who are doing sock knit alongs yes. for the year. Like, yes. what's that one that's doing the rainbow? It's, oh, where you have the color every month. That one. Yeah. Uh, don't quote me. The yeah. color, some, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah. yes, there's some really great ones out there. And, mm -hmm. you know, even just the ones that are just regular, knit a sock a month, you know, it, it's yep. good motivation, I think. It really is. It yeah. really is. I only got, um, I counted mine up. I got eight out of the 12 last year. Oh, that's Wait, good though. You got 12 out of 12, didn't you? Mm -hmm. at minimum. <laughs> yeah, I did. I got a few more, but that's okay. Yeah. But so I'm very impressed with you. Oh, but you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. yeah. But um, I did finish my dark waters, dark water. Yep. Dark okay. water. I always want to call it something else, but I did <laughs> finish my sweater. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yes. Look this at, is look at the love wool, dark waters and it is a long sleeve and I was really not nervous, but a little hesitant because this is a speckled, it's a speckled yarn on a non-dyed base. So it's like yeah. a cream color. I was really worried about not um, changing my yarn throughout the whole project because I just did it straight, but there's enough variation in it with it being speckled. You yep. would never know the difference. Nope. I literally never. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And so, and so lovely random, like yes. there's no actual pooling that I can see. And I have never done the dark color as the color work versus a lighter for the, I've never done that. So it was ah. pleasantly a good surprise. I was very, very pleased with it. So I just need to block it and well, now I get to put it away until fall next year. I know, right? We just got done saying it's going to be 70. Oh, <laughs> It's okay. You know, it's kind of fun to have a new sweater waiting for fall. I like, yeah. you know, yeah. pull it out and the leaves come down and it's like, oh, I have a brand new sweater to wear. <laughs> yes. Well, now wait, before you put it away, first off, what yes. size did you knit? 
I did a 36. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and versus me, who I think I am knitting a 40, I think I'm knitting the 40 inch bust. Okay. And then, or maybe I'm knitting the 42, I think, whatever. Anyway, but then you also did something different with the cuffs. And the yes, pattern. on my cuffs and on my ribbing, I did a twisted rib. And the reason I did twisted rib is so many times you get that sweater on, you know, it looks super cute the first couple of times you wear it. And then it is stretched out beyond all belief. And it, it's the one thing that just does not recoup. And with wear and tear on yeah. that area or around, you know, the cuff or the um, band at the bottom, it just doesn't take too well. So I did a twisted rib one by one and it just gives it, there's more spring to it. There and is. You can just see it holds its, it's, um, it's shaped better. So much better. Yeah. Here. So, and I, yeah. even though we're not talking about my sweater yet, let's yeah, uh, you can I'll, show it. I'll just hold up this uh -huh. and that way people can see the difference. Yep. So this is a regular one by one rib and that's her twisted rib. Now yep. granted. So and then if I stretch this out, mm -hmm. it stays stretched out. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you see that? Sorry, I moved. No, you're good. I can see it. Whereas this is yours. more what I consider like your traditional tube top sock. Yeah. You know, it really gives a lot more stretch. So I tried that with the sweater thinking it would be something different. And I did it around the cuff and the um, bottom band. So I'm, I'm anxious to try it and see. I love it. Wears. Yeah. yeah. What about the collar? Did you, did you, do I did that regular because okay. again, on a collar where you want it to lay a little more flat. Yeah. I, I just, I kind of went with that for a little more, um, breathing room, you know? Yeah. And you don't mm -hmm. want that sweater that you got to jam over. <laughs> no. no, not at all. You know, one, one kind of design that I've been keeping an eye out for is one of those sweaters where it's a folded over collar. Um, so it's a double, is it the double thickness? Yeah. You know, I really want to do one of those. I just don't know how it would feel on. I'm a little nervous about that. I think as long as it has some give to it, mm -hmm. where you're not feeling like you're strangled in the turtleneck or whatever, I think it would be yeah. fine. But yeah, some of those, especially like where you're at when you're winters, I mean, you want something mm -hmm. up around your neck and warm, but not exactly. snuggled in. <laughs> Yep. That's exactly what I've been thinking is like, oh, that's one of the things. For a pattern for that. That could be really yeah. cute on you. Yeah. Well, you know, what's been interesting. Um, we, you knits Alexandria, we had her on yeah. two episodes ago. She's so yeah. Cute. Absolutely love her. I hope so you took cute. advantage of her coupon. Yes. Um, but she, she and I have been talking and I have, I'm doing a test knit for her right now. And, um, but she has been like on a mission to find a sweater Aww. um uh silhouette yeah that fit me and Aww, she came that's sweet of her you know right yes. she came across this one that just came out that is um reminiscent of a, of a 50s top where it's like Ooh. so it's it's kind of like a, a square triangle where it's oh, like nice. this and then so broad shoulders and then oh. going Angle down to a narrow way yeah and uh, she was all like, I really think this is the one for you. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, I think she's right. <laughs> what could it hurt? You know? Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So we'll see. Do you but have any finished objects for this week? Absolutely none. Okay. <laughs> I'm I've been dropping all my fat, my stuff You're everywhere. So funny. So. Well, um, I did how, cast on something new because I finished my socks and I finished my sweater. Um, I did cast on, um, I had some leftover of my sweater in this little color. And so I just cast it on some basic vanilla socks. I don't know. There's, I think they're in the car, you know, pickup line knitting. Uh, yeah. So I don't know where they are to show you. Um, now you got to take the kids to school. Right. You got to have car knitting again. That's right. <laughs> That's a good 30 minutes in line. Yeah. Yeah. I but know. I did cast on um, a girl's best friend shawl by Isabel Kramer. And my mom had sent me some yarn that was in her stash. And this is from Six and Seven Fibers. Do we know where they're out of? Uh, la, la, la. I'm going to say Montana. And I could be totally Ooh. wrong on that. But 
who knows? Um, we can link them in the show notes and I'll tag them on Instagram as well. Um, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, so I cast it on for that shawl. And this is between our, a girl's best friend, I think it is. I've never even heard of that pattern, but I love it. The oh, texture. I, oh. I did this one with another friend of mine. I want to say last fall or maybe two falls ago. I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. COVID brain, right? Yeah. Um, and I loved the shawl so much. And I thought I want to knit this again, but I didn't really put that into play. And then my mom sent me the kit that six and seven fibers had, you know, she had purchased. And she said, mm -hmm. this is what I want for Mother's Day. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she picked out her colors and which direction she wanted it to go. The third color is a, uh, oh, like a purpley mauve color, I guess you could say. This yeah. is more of a gray. I don't know if the light's showing. And then the, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the mustard, so. Oh. super fun knit it um it, it literally changes pattern all the way through so it's very textured very fun yeah um, I'm really liking her fiber this is her it's called her alfalfa base it's um <laughs> an 80 10 10 cashmere nylon merino super wash so no wonder you're liking it right mm -hmm. learning to love gray lady and ginger snap are her colors so. Okay, so the ginger snap must be the mustardy one. Yeah. And then gray okay. ladies in the middle, and then learning to love is that purpley mauve color. So it's a beautiful yeah. triad of colors. It, it's going to be fun. And I'm just getting to the textured part right here. So, so super, wait, super now fun. confession time for you. Oh, yeah. you. This is the second time you've cast that on. True. For your um, I cast it on the first time and my mom said, oh, I didn't want that color in that spot. And I said, mother, <laughs> <laughs> but I love her and it's her gift. So I said, I'll do it. Yep. So actually it wasn't bad. I had just gotten the first section of color. And so I just put it on the yarn winder and whoop, out it came. I was going to so, say you had, you had to obviously had to undo it in order to make this shawl work, huh? Yes. So dang, because I loved how that was looking. I know. So, yeah. but I also want her to be pleased with her Mother's Day gift. So, yeah, yeah. And it all depends. Like, I mean, like for me, if I had that gold right next to my face, that would be a tragedy. Same but, here. Yeah. Yes. I have too fair of skin for that, but she definitely, she can pull it off. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. well, how about you? that's all I've got this week. Really? Oh boy. Okay. I know. Okay. Well, right here, I'm knitting on a pair of socks. This is the oh, online. Cute. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of designing it. I, I have this idea oh. in my head of some hiking socks. That's and so cute. I pulled out some sport, I think it's sport weight. It's um 150 grams. Let's see if this will, yeah. okay. 150 right grams. Mm -hmm. So I've got, ooh, I've got, I've knit with their fingering weight. I've never knit with their sport weight though. Me neither. And I've had it for a while. So, I mean, might yeah. as well. But so the thing is, is that my soon to be sister-in-law, she rescues wounded animals or animals that are unwanted or right. And that kind of stuff. And uh -huh. she doesn't technically have a farm or a ranch, but it's kind of like, you know, an animal hotel, but <laughs> But she absolutely loves them and she takes such Aww. good care of them. And so I wanted to knit her a pair of appropriate socks for her to be out mucking out the stalls and stuff. Super cute. Yep. So I started this with one by one twisted rib. Yep. Uh, funny. And now I'm into yeah. two by two. Cute. And I think I'm going to do that ribbed heel that is so yes. popular right now. Yes. Um, but I'm going to do it doubled up. And then I'm also going to do doubled up toes. So when you say double, are you going to hold double the current yarn or are you going to add in a different color? Nope. I'm going to okay. use, I'm going to, well, I mean, who knows? Maybe I will. I don't know. Well, isn't, um, isn't it gold, gold toe, gold wing socks, whatever those are, where they always do the toe is gold and then gold. whatever other color with it. Yep. So I think yep. either would be really cute. Yep. And the, the reason I'm doing this is, um, I can't, re I, mean, I know she, 
So my sister-in-law, she's got some of the same health problems as I do. And um, one of the things is we have a bad circulation, circulation in our feet. And I just want her toes, like if she's wearing her galoshes or yeah. is that what they're called? Galoshes? Yeah, the muck boots. Yeah. yeah. Or her hiking boots. Either way, your feet get, get your, your toes get really cold. And so, and then also with those kind of shoes, the heel wears out a lot faster. Yes. So my thought process was, is to create something that will be more yeah. um, reliable with those kinds of boots. So, well, and to add to that triad, you know, even in the warmer months, wool yeah. breathes so well and it, it's exactly. a wicking with sweat. And I think all around, she'll be pretty pleased with that. Yes. So I That's will, cute. The, yeah, I will write this pattern up, but it will be free. Um, so because the way I have it done is like, you can do it 56 inch, uh, 56 stitches, 60 stitches, 64 or 70. That's good. Yeah. Or it gives you a good range. Yeah. So not 70, it would have to be like 72, 72. but anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that is one. Oh, I like that color. I'm, I'm anxious to know what you think of the sport weight in that. Cause like I said, I've used their fingering, but that's it. That's intriguing. Right. And so normally I knit socks on zeros. So I went up to a one on this and I really like the dense fabric it's creating. Yeah. So oh, that's um, cute. And just so everybody knows what colorway this is, there it is. Uh, two, four, two, five. Okay. And oh yeah. Cause they do numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Is that coming up? No. Yeah. There we go. Right there. Yeah. Perfect. So if you're wanting to find that one, it's, it's like a garden color. I love it. It's um, super cute. I like it. Yeah, exactly. Then mm -hmm. I, I just mentioned a minute ago that I cast on the uh, test knit for Alex. And oh, yeah. so that, that is this pattern here. Um, it's a local owl to us, but I don't know how to say it. Uh, a uh, Julius, a uh, Julius, a uh, Julius. She'll correct us later. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I can't even spell it right when I'm tagging it on Insta oh, on Instagram. Right. Like, but so what it is is a sleeveless top. It's not technically a vest. It's but, really cute. Yeah, it starts out with a you're doing lace for the waist, right. mm -hmm. and you're casting on for the waist, and then working your way up. And I really liked this because I've been wanting something sleeveless for a long okay. time. Mainly, That's going to be perfect for summer. Right? Mm -hmm. But mainly just to challenge myself because, oh, yeah. lots and lots out. To challenge myself because um, I have beautiful arms, but I always hide them. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I think it's fun too as a knitter to still have, have a piece for every season. And that includes spring and summer, you know, cause so yeah. many times people think, Oh, why would you be wearing wool? Well, wool is very breathable. It's very conducive to spring and summer, as long as you have the right kind of wool or the right type of sweater, like you're saying with a sleeveless yes. top, that's a perfect idea. Yep. Sorry. I got distracted because my cute little sleepy Bubba came out. <laughs> So, hi. So cute. But I completely agree. And yes. I've wanted summer sweaters for a while. And I do have another summer sweater on the needles. Um, it's very technical. Mm. Uh, broomstick lace um, all over here. Wow. And so I think that's what they call it broomstick lace. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I pick it back up, because I will once these sweaters yeah. are done, because I'm on a complete sweater kick right now. Focus, um, focus, focus. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. So I have a whole, uh, I'll talk about my whole regime and routine of, yes. what, of this um, with all my other sweaters too. So, but um, you guys I might remember that. I picked up some Mad Tosh. Like, this is what I envision my, what my color to be. Now, for those of you who might know um, Jamie of M1 Yarns, she is yes. going to be dying up. Um, I gave her free reign. Do what... Do what you like, whether they're solid colors or not. Yes. This is driving me crazy with the thing. We might have to pause for a second so I can get rid of that sunlight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but 
she's going to have some colorways coming in um, for the wedding. And for right that now, though, cool. I am knitting this. Okay. Everything's kind of messed up because I shoved it back in here when we left the vet. That color is so pretty. I mean, it's, it's that perfect, elegant pink, you know? Yes. And that's the lace that's going on. I'm it almost, good. yeah, I'm almost done with the first repeat of the lace. And it's, it's a simple lace, but it's very effective, especially in a semi-solid. If you noticed on, mm -hmm. on Alex's sweater, the yarn yes. is dominant. Well, but, and I'll tell you what, that's going to be a perfect sweater. If she launches that here soon, that'll be a perfect cast on for spring for everybody. I completely agree. And yeah. she is planning on doing it soon. Like um, the due date for this is May 1st. But oh, she, that's perfect. Yeah. She gave me permission to not have to finish it, finish it, because she knows about oh. my wedding. <laughs> She's so but, sweet. Yeah. She is just amazing. So, and again, I don't want to give away the secret sauce, but she mm -hmm. is doing quite extensive um, sizes. Hey, Jeremy, would you mind closing the blind? Mm -hmm in the kitchen yeah, she really has quite the range when it comes to yeah you know all those sizes so i'm not going to give away the sizes she says but yeah. just so you know like she gives quite a lot of sizes and in within each of those sizes she lists the bust the oh, okay. waist an under bust the armhole the s s c y e Depth, S C Y E depth. Not oh, ringing a bell. Yeah, and then the next. But line. that is nice to have. You know, it's one thing to have size. Ah, he's giving things away. Never mind. <laughs> it's one thing to have size, but it's another thing to have specific measurements for, like you said, arms, armholes, bust, under bust. It just yeah. gives a clearer, a clearer diagram of what the intention is when you're knitting that. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. And, and it her. makes it so, and it makes it so people like me, like, um, I'm knitting two different sizes on yeah. this. Um, so, and I can do that because, because she's no. given, yeah, she's given the diameters, the, That's and the so stitch cool. counts for all of those. So kudos awesome. to her. Yes. yes. And be on the lookout for that pattern when it comes out, people. It's really yes. Awesome. Okay. So I've got a big monstrosity here. And that's not a monstrosity. Da, da. I know, right? I've just got to take off my, hold on. I've got to take off. This has been my, your labor of love. Oh my gosh, has it ever. Yes. I, and um, I told Jeremy, if this doesn't prove how much I love you, I don't know what does. It's right? not that it's a, <laughs> yeah. And it's not that this is a terrible knit. It's just that. Um, no, but men are men are big to knit for it's bigger yes. than us you know it's just not yeah it's a lot yeah sorry guys i'm trying to oh you're fine i have so many skeins of yarn attached to this right now and <laughs> in order to, for me to wield it i've been spearing my skeins of yarn with my needles that's smart and then yep and then putting the needle stoppers on okay here we go so oh my okay God. that's upside down here we go so we've got the um oh my gosh what's it called the, the marshland sweater oh sorry uh-huh and ten ten knits. yep and i've got the body was split for the sleeves and finished the color work for the yoke then i came back wow. and i knit the color work on the sleeves because there's more and that was really confusing yep. and then i came back and i did finished up let yesterday and then oh. there's color this one sleeve and I added in. So, okay, so there's some changes that I did. Okay. So in the original pattern, the yoke color color work continues on to be like these, um, yes. but it kind of looks like an upside down cross the way it ends. Oh. Not really our style. So, sure, sure. So I just ended it at the chevrons. I which, like it. Yeah, Jeremy loves this too. And I think the fun and, part about Tin Can Knits and their color work is it lends to variations so easily. Yes, so exactly. easily. Yeah. Now I did go ahead and do the- Oh the, yeah. 
yeah. the striping there, but it wasn't an upside down cross. It's just mimicking the color work oh, there. Oh, I think that is really cool. Yes. And then oh, I did the ribbing, but then I changed it up and I put, I, I brought in the black for down Cute. there. Now, this is Knit Picks Provincial Tweed Worsted Weight. The main mm -hmm. color is the gray. Whoops. Mm -hmm. And then. Now, did then you pick the colors or did Jeremy pick the colors? I picked them and then I I allowed him to veto anything, but he was just good. He's just like, it's I trust you. It's a good your, choice. It's yeah. a good choice. It's worked out really well. Very so, cool. The brown is called caramel. Okay. The blue is frosted pond. Cute. Green is salsa. And the black is actually just black. So there's okay. There's very little black, but I feel like the black is grounding. It does. It gives color. it definition for sure. Yes. Oh, that's so, so cool. And good for um, you for getting that sleeve done. Yeah, right. So, okay, so here's not my fun. question now. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of thinking of putting this on the, the body on the try it on tubing and then switching these to larger to longer needle cable needles and having him try it on before I knit the second sleeve. I would highly recommend at any point him trying it on. Okay. You know, the, the more try on time, so to speak, the better, because then, you know, you're going to see how it fits on him. He's going to feel, understand how it feels to wear a hand knit sweater. Cause it is different than a, yep. you know, machine made mm -hmm. sweater. It's totally, totally yep. different. Well, and he is a messy fella. And so one of the things that I really like about this is the chest area is colorful enough that if he spills <laughs> on himself and then I put the black on the edging here for the same reason, because I was trying to be There you go, make it work. Yep. Oh, so, that okay, looks really so, nice, Em. You've done a yeah. really good job on that. So this is the second to the largest men's sizes they give. So this okay. is not I mean, like, this is not a, I mean, I could wear this two times over. Sure. But, um, but again, so this they is have not, such good sizing. Yes, they really do. And it's not, sorry, I'm picking up all of the yarn no, that I've got good. attached. So, you know, I love but it. I guess I have to put it there. Oh. It's not something <clears throat> that I would normally do. Like I've been wanting to knit, actually I did knit Jeremy a sweater and it looked atrocious on him. Oh, uh, like terrible but then I tried it on all my other brothers and stuff yeah it looks bad on everybody it really so does. it's the sweater not okay yeah. but you know what that's good to know because otherwise how are you supposed to know for next yeah time? yeah so oh. so I haven't re I haven't had the the um courage to try another sweater because mm -hmm. I, it, the first one failed so miserably yeah um but I, you know, if ever there was a time, the wedding is why not. Time. Yep. So why not dive in deep? That's there what I go. say. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> and then I have for my sweater, which is called, actually, I'm going to get it wrong. I think it's called Stormy. No, it's not. Uh, it's something like that. I just don't remember what it's called. Here's the it's another tin can knits pattern as well. Yep. Oh no, actually, um, I switched it. So oh, did this you? one, yep. Yeah, so this one is, I switched it to Starfall. Yes. And that is by um, Jennifer Steingast, Knit Love Wool. Yes. And the reason I did that was because it mimicked, um, so the yoke, the this is a, yep. And then the, the cuffs and the yes. waistband. And I didn't like the ones necessarily for my wedding, mind you, not mm -hmm. regular knitting of yeah. tin can knits, uh, sweaters. I plan on, I kind of splurged and bought a crap ton of their eBooks. Well, but it'll be fun because when you see the two sweaters together, they will play off of each other, but they're not going to contrast. Yeah. You know, so exactly. it'll be beautiful for photos or whatever you guys end up doing with them. Yep. And our colors are sort of similar but not um okay. well actually not not at all who am I kidding but <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like like you like you were just saying they they'll complement uh, yeah for sure so this if I had read this I I made a whole plan okay and about what I have to have done per week so oh. 
Yep. So I had to have the yoke done for Jeremy's sweater the first week. Nice. And then I needed to get the sleeves done last week for me. Well, nice. okay. When I was writing my plan, it was supposed to be, I need to get the yoke done for me. Oh. And then this week is now the sleeves. So, um, but what I, ne- I didn't read the pattern. This is a traditional Icelandic design. Well, it's not because we can't actually call it that because she's not Icelandic, right? <laughs> but it's modeled after that. Fair enough, fair enough. And apparently they start with the sleeves. So oh. that's the first thing she has you do. You know, so, I think I did that on one of her other sweaters. Um, now that you mm. say that. Yeah. yeah. But it was so, it was just so relieving and energizing. Like we've that's talked the about hardest the- part of a sweater. Let's not yeah. even lie. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I love, I love how subtle my, um, my color work is coming up on the, on the it's cuffs. very soft. It looks very pretty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so fun. this is done. And so the way it now works mm-hmm. is when I get my weekly goal done for my wedding sweaters, okay. I am then allowed to pick up and knit on the test knit. That's a great goal. Yes. Great goal. And the way the sleeves are going for Jeremy, I mean, hello. oops. Well, look at you. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Spam call. My gosh. I hope, I don't know if I have to edit something. I don't know now. No, but... I just get a cute screenshot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Well, well, the way that, the way that the, like, I literally cast on Jeremy's sleeves uh, to do the color work part on Saturday. Yeah. You have and, flown through that. Right. And so today is Monday and I've got both the color work done on both sleeves awesome. and an entire sleeve done. I should be done with his sleeves no later than Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, if, if that, no, and, I think uh, you're on track totally. And I love the increments, you know, getting it done and then it's, yeah, yes. that's perfect. And what else, what the other thing is, is that I've decided to give myself rewards along the way. Yeah. So, um, well, this, so this one's kind of a Mm pre-reward. Uh, I'm buying myself a cricket machine this week. Oh yes. But that was supposed to be my reward for the halfway point. And so, but this both sleeves being done, I feel like. It's it's your goals. You do what you want. Yeah. But guys, I've got this new idea in my head for, for, um, for doing something super cool that I'm, I'm hoping that people will like, and will like want to buy pieces of, and in order to do it, I need a cricket machine. So, you know, I'm kind of like it's part of your business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> I love it. but that's, I think that's awesome. I think that's, that's, a, that's a good amount for the week. Yeah. Really? I, I'm I like, technically it was, two, oh, so I guess it was been two weeks, but yeah. did I, I don't even remember now. Did I have the Marshland sweater cast on? No, none of them. Yeah. No, oh. this, you've, you've, you've clocked off a lot of miles. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I haven't knit even a single stitch on my um, dark water, but the plan is, is that. But you I'm can actually, finish that when you're done. Yeah. Yeah. And I need to rip this out because I didn't realize I picked up the armholes oh, inside out. Yeah. So I'm going to start the arms again, but they're yeah. only going to be like these sleeves. They're only going to be three quarter. That'd be perfect. Yeah. Cause I want to be able to wear it in the summer. So yeah, just like we talked about. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about tossing wool, shall we? <laughs> Well, I had one this week that came all the way from Alaska from a wonderful friend of mine whom you might know. (laughs) She, and this Emily gifted my girls a skein of yarn this week. Um, She was so cute. She said, I just saw it and it reminded me of your girls. So knit something cute for them. I said, oh, I can do that. So 
<laughs> this is called Bedazzled. And this is from Fiber Nymph Dye Works, who is Lisa. And Lisa has a podcast called 90% Knitting that you guys should definitely check out. She's been doing yep. it for a long time. Very yep, seasoned. She's one of the OGs. Oh, very seasoned. Yeah. Uh, but this one is her 7525. So this has her um, Stellina in it. And this yeah. is called Bedazzled. Isn't it beautiful? Right. Like, so it's a gradient of color starting with the purple, the blue, pink, the lime, and into that tangerine color. Oh, that's what that color is. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't put my finger on it. So cute. So I don't know if we're going to do leg warmers or Ooh. mittens or just something fun. But the yeah. girls saw it and, oh, Miss Emily sent us something. Miss Emily sent us something. I said, yes, she did. <laughs> Yep. And I was like, I wish I'd been able to get two because then it would have been even oh, better, but still. This will be fun. We will have so many. Yes. We're in the stage where we don't want exactly the same thing, yeah. but we can kind of match. So no, yeah. this is wonderful. So thank you so much. This yes. Really fun. So yes, I, I am excited to try her face of this for sure. Yeah. Cause you had, you haven't knit with her yarn yet. Have no, you? I, I, I have wanted to and just have never done it, you know, yeah. so, but yes, Fiber Nymph Dye Works, go look her up, guys. She's got some fantastic colors. Yeah, she's been a staple of mine for probably, I mean, I don't want to say time. 10 years because I feel like that could be yeah, wrong. I would but say so. Yeah, pretty close. And, you know, I absolutely love her self-striping socks uh, kits. And then, yes. um, She's got this one called Inversibles, I think it is, where Ooh. she'll do, um, she'll break up a, a hundred gram skein in half. And the first half, yes. she'll do the, the like a one dominant color, like is really strong and big, and then a small I contrast. saw those. Yep. And then on the co opposite side, she, takes, like the the, opposite. she takes the opposite. Um, so knitting so cool. the two socks is, that's is, really cool. uh, yeah. Um, and I've got like two or three sets of those and I've never knit them, but I just. Time to cast them on. <laughs> I feel like it. Yeah. It's going to be one of the ones for <laughs> the summer knitting, I think. Good. Well, I have two things that I got this week. Yes. And this they're last beautiful. Week. Well, and since I decided that I was going to knit that top, I yep. didn't have enough with one skein, so I had to go out and get another skein. Oh, what color. was me? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh. While I was there, um, I, you know, I already had this one colorway mm -hmm. for Mad Tosh that Jeremy really likes. That's one of our wedding swatches. It's so pretty. So I just picked up another one yeah. because I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know if it's going to be necessarily for Jeremy. It might be for me. But I thought, wouldn't it be beautiful to knit something big with mm -hmm. all, all of that? Absolutely. So, who knows? He might not get it. I keep, I keep picturing a, a hat shawl in worsted oh. weight for me, right? Oh, yeah. I'm a terrible person because Jeremy is very knit worthy enough. <laughs> I know. But sometimes it's just got to be selfish knitting time. Let's be real. Yeah. Let's yeah. be real. It's true. It's true. I and I do... Oh, uh, you guys probably saw last time the quill shawl that I put up on when, when we were talking with uh, Jill. Yes. Wait, did I put up the picture? Of that? We talked about it. Yeah. And I was, I, I meant to put up the picture of it and I can't remember if I did or not because you, as most of you know, I do all the editing on my phone and my phone was not behaving. Like it wouldn't <laughs> let me crop things. It would say it was crap. It was real I life, guys. The video. Yeah. It was just, ugh. And I, so I can't remember if I kept it on there or not. But anyway, um, that's one of the things I'm going to knit with M1 Yarns. When Ooh. She tries it other ways. Yeah. That'll be gorgeous. Yeah. But I also, I think I want a sweater, I want a whole sweater quantity. Uh, so, well, it's a rough I mean, life. Yeah. Yeah. But see, that is my prize for getting the wedding sweaters done is I'm allowed to buy both the shawl and the sweaters quantity from uh, M1 Yarns to, nice. as my celebration 
you know? Nice. So, yeah. Hey, whatever works for you. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I think. I think that about does it. It does. We did really good. I'm proud of you. (laughs) Oh, it's been fun. Ripped out my needles. Oh, Oh, no. Crap. Yeah. So, for those of you, a good knitter will be able to pick them up. Yep. But that's one good thing about when you knit yarn on, uh, like, Okay, so sport weight. Usually you would knit with a size two or three. Oh, um, yeah. Knitting. This isn't so teeny you won't be able to pick them up. Yep. And it's made it so the fabric is stiff enough that the stitches aren't, well, and this is grabby yarn, so yes. the stitches aren't slipping away. But anyway, okay, I'll finish this in a second. You're so sweet. Thank you guys all for joining us. And please just remember that... Uh, Until next time, remember that life happens between knits and pearls. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. I'll get it right eventually, I promise. (laughs) I always want to do my thing where it's knit. Remember to knit what you love and love what you knit. I just, I can't get that out of my head. All habits die hard, I'll tell you.